Hi everybody, this is Bill Shaws, and this is another edition of Bullets Academy. And today we're going to be, our history lesson is going to be a little bit more recent history than what we've done in the past, as we're only going back a year to the 2019 World Championships in Gwangju, Korea, where Regan Smith breaks the world record in the 100 backstroke, leading off the 400 medley relay. What's interesting about this race is that is how she got in the position to swim the hunter back and lead off the medley relay. And for that, we need to go all the way back to the World Trials in 2018. The United States is unique in that we have our World Championship Trials a year ahead of time. If we were to have the World Championship Trials in the same year as the World Championships, we'd probably have to have that meet in early to mid-June. And with swimmers coming off NCAAs in March, that's a narrow window to turn around and, and try to get them to be fast and really field our best team. So we, for that and other reasons, the, we, the meet is hosted a year out, and um, it's a unique event because at that World Trials, they're also selecting many other teams, Pan Pax, Pan Am, usually World uh, uh, Junior Team and things like that, so World University Games. So it's usually a lot of meets, creates a lot of hype and a lot of excitement for that meet. So at the 2018 uh, U.S. Nationals in Irvine, California, Regan Smith and Kathleen Baker tie for first place on the 200 back, and they both make the World Championship team. In the 100 back, Kathleen Baker goes a 58.00 and breaks Kylie Massey's world record of 58.1. Kylie Massey is a, was the former world record holder uh, out of Canada, and she's going to be at World Championships trying to defend her, uh, her title and, and perhaps even get her world record back. So I think you know how that goes based on the story so far, but anyway, we'll keep that in mind. Um, and also in the world at the World Trials, Olivia Smoliga from Illinois up in Glenbrook and uh, now swimming for uh, Georgia Bulldogs and is a graduate now and is a training, still training down in Georgia. Olivia goes 58.73 and she also makes the World Championship team. Regan Smith goes a 58.9 and just misses making the team in the 100 backstroke. So now we fast forward. Now, So Regan Smith is on the team in the two back. She's not on the team in the one back. We fast forward now to the... Uh, you know, 2019, we're in Korea and we're at the World Championships. Uh, early in the meet, and the, court, the way the meet format works is um, the 200 backstroke is, uh, well, uh, both backstrokes are actually before the 400 medley relay, which is important because had the 400 medley relay been before the two back, probably wouldn't have been Regan Smith swimming on that event. But because it was on the last day and both backstrokes were swum, in the 200 backs, in the, um, in the 200 backstroke, um, in prelims, um, Regan Smith goes a lifetime best time of 206.01, faster than um, Kathleen Baker's best time of 206.1. Kathleen ba and then um, in the semifinals, Regan Smith uncorks a monster swim and goes a 203.35. She breaks the world record by seven tenths of a second. It's breaking uh, Missy Franklin's record of a 204.06. So 65 from seven tenths of a second, um, 71 hundredths of a second, my math is right. Um, she cried, that's a, she is just smashes that record, crushes it. And Regan Smith is having a phenomenal meet. Her back, her time to the feet in the hunter was, uh, was under a minute. She goes 59 to her feet. Now, uh, in finals, she goes a 203.6, a couple of times slower than her world record swim in semifinals. But she's the world record holder. She wins the event by, I think, three seconds, just crushes the field. Kathleen Baker, on the other hand, does not even make it to the finals. She is ninth in the semis with another 206 or 206 high. So Kathleen Baker is not having a great meet so far, but she's a world record holder. Now we're going to go into the 100 backstroke, where Kathleen Baker, like I said, 58.00 at the World Trials is her seed time going into prelims. She goes a 59.30. Olivia Smoliga, 58.7 at World Trials, goes a 59.6. They're both slower than their time at Worlds. But it's early. It's the semifinal. It's the, it's the prelims. They both have a lane in the semifinals, and that's what the goal is. The goal of prelims is to get a lane in the semis. That's really it. In the semifinals, Kathleen Baker goes a 59.03. She's still a full second slower than her 100 back time from the World Trials. And I, I imagine the coaches and, and even Kathleen are probably getting a little bit nervous right now, thinking, oh, this is not the meet I had envisioned and hoped for. Uh, Olivia Smoliga, 59.3. She's about six tenths off of her time, too. So neither, again, but for Olivia, I think that's, you know, you're like, okay, you know, it's a, you're, you're within half a second. They both get a lane in the finals, so it's not 
It's not brutally like, oh my gosh. You know, they both have a lane going into finals, so they're both in, in good shape. They've got another shot. And so, um, but to get to the finals, and um, Kathleen Baker goes 58.9. And so she goes with 58, but she's still nine tenths of a second off of her world record time. Uh, Olivia Smoliga, 59.5, also about six, seven tenths off of what she went the year before. So now the situation is we've got a backstroker that is crushing it in the two back. She's out in the 59, and but you've got the world record holder here. Uh, ironically, Kath, um, Kylie uh, Massey, who was the former world record holder, wins the 100 backstroke. Again, off world record pace, and she's a little bit slower, I think, than her world record time of 58 1. Um, but uh, so, adding a little bit more drama to this medley relay, is you're going to have the uh, former world record world in there. So, now your team, you know, say you're the coaching staff. And what most people don't realize is that it's not, you know, it's like, hey, whoever goes faster out of the two back circles is going to do the X work in the medley. Whoever goes faster in the press work is the press work in the medley. That's not necessarily how it works. And we saw that a lot with Michael Phelps. Um, in the free relays where Michael Phelps may not even swim the 200 free earlier, but they, you know, or didn't swim the 200 free at, at the Olympics, but ended up on the relay at Olympic trials because he's, or, I'm sorry, didn't swim the 200 free at the Olympics, but ends up on the 800 free relay because he's Michael Phelps and you know you're going to get a big swim out of him. So, so here's the situation now. We have the world record holder and the coaches have to make a decision to put her on the bench or not put her on the bench. And they decide to put her on the bench and swim this young Regan Smith uh, to lead off the medley relay. You can argue whether or not it's a bold decision or not, but it's a little bit controversial, I think, just by virtue of the fact that she, uh, you know, uh, that, that those two girls both beat her at the trials. But she's having a great meet. So they put her up there. And so, and this relay is loaded. I mean, let's just look at the first half of this relay. You've got um, you got Regan Smith, who there's some buzz about whether or not she can actually get the world record, but there's a lot of feeling she's going to go up 58 low to mid and get that relay out in some fresh water. And then she's going to turn it over to Lily King. Lily King is the world record holder in the breaststroke. Oh, yeah, and at the end of the relay, at the back end, is Simone Manuel. Okay, so you've got three gold medalists on this relay, so I think there's a good chance that this relay is going to win, you know, if you have a good start. So... Regan Smith hops in the water. She's ready to go. USA is in lane four. Two lanes over lane six. You have Kylie, uh, Kylie Massey. And uh, the race starts. And right off the bat, you really see the athleticism of Regan Smith. She gets up nice and high out of the water, gets her hips up, drops that, that start in really nice and deep. So now she can get her dolphin kicks going. And she's an exceptional dolphin kicker, too. She really moved those feet up and down. And so I mean, the athleticism of that move is great. I'm going to take a little time out from the race here just to talk about that. You know, at a time right now where we're probably not going to be in the water for another three to four weeks, maybe even a little bit longer than that. We hope to be in the water by June 1st, the 1st of June. But, you know, this is a great opportunity for our athletes, for our swimmers to work on functional training, do some squats, do some leg exercises, do some core workouts. I know that we're producing some of that for you, but I think this is a great time to really build your athleticism and, 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 and do that. I think that's, no, let me rephrase that. That is definitely going to help your swimming career um, moving forward, even though you're not in the water right now. So, kind of messy time. Great dolphin gets popped up. She's in the lead. The world record split is 27.9 seconds. Regan Smith turns 27.7. And now we also get to see a really great underwater shot of Regan Smith's dolphin kicks. I think she could have gone a little bit deeper, but that's, we're going to, I'll let her coach Mike Prada worry about that. And so um, Mike has like a billion more world records than I do coaching. And so I'm going to let, let him. I'll trust his judgment on it. So she does some great dolphin kicks. She pops up. She's got a massive lead. And again, when you see the race at about the 75 meter mark, she's put the entire heat at her feet. She's got a body link lead. You have the former world record holder. This is a great swim in the making. She comes onto the flags again, dominating. And what's really interesting too is you watch that last 20, 15 meters. That's when things start to hurt. She's on world record pace. She's out well, much you know, she, uh, you know, she's out. Probably half a second, three times of a second of history. She's ever been in her life. And then this is where the legs start to really burn. This is where the arms don't want to go as fast. And your hands hit that water and you can't hit that water. You just don't want to power the water through. So you might let go of the water a little bit. And then just to make it easier for your hands to get through. But not Regan Smith. She is churning. She's moving. And every single time her body is really moving through the water. Great finish. Fully arches, extends into the wall. 57 Point five seven. She again smashes another world record. 
Regan, uh, I'm sorry, Kathleen Baker's time of 50, 58.00. Regan Smith goes 57.5. She drops the world record by a half a second. It's pretty much unheard of, but also what she did to the 200 back world record is not surprising. She broke that one by seven times. So um, an incredible swim, obviously the fist pump at the end. And now she turns over to um, Lily King. And, you know, you, you got to feel a little bit for Kathleen Baker. She's at the meet. I'm, you know, cheering her teammates on. She's a great girl, a great woman. And she's cheering her teammates on. And she's got to keep cheering. She's just lost the 100 back world record. And there's a really, really good chance that this relay is going to smash the world, her 400 mile leg relay. So in one in one swim, she loses two world records, but both of her world records, and yet you know still cheering the team out and stuff. And that's one of the great things about Team USA. So um, again, I, I think what, the reason I chose this race is because of the fact not that she broke the world record, even though it was an amazing swim, two amazing swims, and hats off to her coach Mike Prado but also because of the way that it happened. Again, the Team USA owns the relays and they can do whatever they want. There is no limitations. If you're on the roster, you're eligible to swim on a relay. So there's probably a little politics can go on. I've never been in that room myself on those relays are picked, but um, there is a process for that and it's where the coaches sit down and just figure out what's best for the for USA swimming and for our relays and, and to make that happen. And the coaches did that. Took a little bit of a gamble. I think, you know, the way Regan was swimming, it's not totally surprising that they did that. But still, it's, uh, you know, when you've got a world record holder on the bench, that, that's, that's a tough thing to do. So, um, so I encourage you to go back and watch that race. Some great footage of it. And even watch the other swimmers, too, and watch what they do. You know, you're, uh, and there's because there's just some great swimming in that race. So next week, we're going to talk about butterfly. And I've got some ideas about how I want to do that. Um, we've had some pretty good butterflyers. Um, uh, Mary DeSenza is the current American record holder to 200 butterfly. And so made the world championship team uh, training with the Bulls. So, uh, but then you've got Caleb Dressel. So I'm not sure which direction I'm going to go. And maybe I can sneak in a guest speaker next week too, or do something with that. So um, we're going to, we'll figure it out. But um, so look forward to that, that video next Friday. We'll have the, um, the butterfly. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do, but we'll come up with something. Again, big shout out to our coaches for the great content and stuff they've been putting out. Um, and if you're not getting these daily journals, look in your uh, the daily updates. Look in your um, junk, in your junk folder. That's where I found mine. I got them now and they're in my back, so I'm seeing them every week. But I'm really proud of the work that the coaches are doing, and we're putting together schedules and trying to figure out every option, contacting pools, doing everything we can to get the kids in the water as soon as we get to go ahead. From uh, from the governor to be able to let uh, let us back in. So in the meantime, stay safe. Do some strength work. Do what you can. Keep your fitness levels up um, so that when we're ready to get back in the water, we're going to have a slow ramp up because the kids have been out for a long time. We're not going to hammer you at the, fir- at the front end. We're going to take a slow ramp up. Uh, right now, the, um, all meets are sanctioned through May. There's a probably a pretty good chance uh, that the meets will be sanctioned through June also. Uh, but hopefully we'll get back into swim meets and, and get back to practice in June and then get back into um, some meets uh, in July and, and uh, have a good, you know, good second half of this summer. So um, stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks again to all the bullet coaches for all the work you guys are doing. You guys are working harder than ever, and we're not even on the the deck where we all want to be. So uh, have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you next week.